Hi, in this video, we're gonna talk how to handle API requests in React.js. Think of a waiter taking an order from a customer at a restaurant. The waiter takes the order and sends it to the kitchen and waits for the food to be prepared. When the food is ready, the waiter brings it back to the customer. Similarly, when we make an HTTP request in React.js, we send a request to an API, which processes the request and returns a response back. The response is then received by a React application and used to update the state and render the UI. Go with Floba. Making HTTP requests in React.js is a common practice that enables you to retrieve data from external sources such as APIs and update your application state accordingly. Today, let's say that we want to create a new application. And in this application, we want to show some fun facts about cats. For that purpose, we will need an external API. Let's start off by creating new component in the source folder. So create a new file and name this file as catfact.js. First, let's import React from React. Next, we also need to import use effect hook. Using use effect, we're gonna call the HTTP code from this hook. Next, let's create a simple functional component and name this functional component as catfact. And when this component gets mounted, we want to make an external API request. And we are going to do that inside of the use effect hook. So let's call the use effect. And let's pass an empty dependency array because we want this to run only once. As a first argument, we need to provide in a function. And inside of this function, we're going to make an HTTP request here. Once we get the response back, we want to store that in a variable and render here. Let's create that variable and we're gonna use the use state hook to save it. Let's name this variable as facts and update our function as set facts. And we're gonna use the use state hook. Initial state will be empty string. And then we're just gonna render this variable inside of a div. Now, it's a always good practice to separate concerns in your React.js components. This practically means that we should store our request HTTP code in a separate file. So let's create a new file and call this one as api.js. And although JavaScript has built-in method for making an external API request, which is fetch, most of the developers actually use third-party libraries such as Axios. And we're gonna do the same because of its simplicity. Let's first import Axios from Axios. First, we need to create a new instance of the Axios class. So we do that by calling the axios.create. Inside of this object, we wanna pass in the base URL. And the base URL is the following, https colon forward slash getfact.ninja. And we want to save this inside of the constant and let's name this one as API simply. This means when we call our Axios get method or pass method, this base URL will be added in front of the URLs that we provide. So let's create a new function and let's name this one as get data. We want to export that as well so that we can use it inside of the cat fact. And as we said, this is going to be a simple fat arrow function. And there are multiple ways to handle your asynchronous code. One of them is using the async await. This makes your asynchronous code looks like it's synchronous. Next, inside of this function, we want to make a get request. So we can call our API axios instance and let's use the get method. As a URL, we want to provide for slash data and make sure to have the S for secure protocol here. We want to store this in a variable and let's name this variable as a response. And let's add a wait keyword, which essentially says, wait for this line to be executed and this HTTP request, and then proceed with the execution of this function. And then we want to return from the response property called fact. Now let's save this and let's import it inside of our cat fact. Import get data from API. And let's call it here inside of our use effect hook. Now we can call our get data method or rather function. And when we get a response back, we want to take that response and save that inside of our facts variable. So call the setFacts function 
and pass in the response. Now we can import this component inside of the app.js. So import cat fact from cat fact and let's just render it here as a self closing tag. Let's save and let's see. And this is the worst thing that can happen when you're working with the HTTP requests. Your API request has failed, but you're not providing any feedback to your end user. So if we open up our console, we can see inside of the console that we have uncut error. So we need to handle all the errors that we have. To handle that, let's open up API.js file and let's add try catch block. We can place our code inside of the try block. And if it returns an error, we can catch it here. And from the error object that we get, we can throw a new error and we can pass in the error message. Then this error gets passed to our cat fact here and we can catch it here. Dot catch and we get our message here. Now, there are multiple ways to handle these errors, but for this case, I will just alert it. In most cases, you don't want to display this error message directly from the API to your users, but you rather want to map it and show some more nicely and rather less detailed information. But for tutorial, let's just use this. And now, as you can see, we get this error network error. At least now we are getting the information that something is happening on our page. Now let's fix the error by going to the API.js and let's fix the URL to fact. And when working with Axios, you always get the data from the data property here. Now we fixed all the errors. Let's save this and let's preview. And now we get the cat facts. Now let's say that you navigate to different page in your application. And this API request takes a little bit more time than usual to complete. As you navigate it off this page, there is no reason for this API request to finish up. So you don't want to leave your API request hanging around. So let's clean them up. So it's always a good practice to clean up your HTTP request when your component gets destroyed. And we can do that easily by using the abort controller. So let's create a new instance, new abort controller. And let's save it into a new variable const controller. Next, we can use this controller and send a signal to the API request when we want to abort the request. So inside of our API.js file, we receive a signal when we want to abort the request. And then this signal gets passed as an optional API request. And now inside of the cat fact, in the user fact, we want to add a return statement. And this return statement is used for cleanups. We can just call the controller and call the abort method. And this is how easy it is to clean up your HTTP request and don't let any HTTP request hanging out there. So following the best practices, such as using asynchronous code, separating concerns, handling errors gracefully, and canceling requests when components unmount can help you to write maintainable and scalable code. Well, that's all for this React video stopping by and don't forget to subscribe code with sloba thank you for watching the entire video to see more react tutorials click here